This is Memorial Day, where we remember the fallen. Amen. Uh, sometimes they uh, forget about the fallen. And so I got this thing uh, in, uh, my wife did, and I uh, got it over to my phone about the fallen. The reason why we're having what we're having today is because somebody laid their life down overseas. Amen. Amen. This, you say it come from God. We had to fight for it, man. You see, war is God's judgment on hell here. Is that right? And uh, sin, let's see, sin is God's judgment here, and hell is God's judgment hereafter. I, I, I guess I got it right. But anyway, uh, so, uh, you know, as we've been going through the book of Genesis, we've, uh, we've seen the first war popped up in Genesis 14. You ain't gone 14 chapters in that book, man. And you got five kings coming out against four kings to battle. And that Bible says God's a man of war. Amen. I believe the Bible. Amen. Now, thank God for His grace, His mercy, His long-suffering, and all that deals with us. But uh, our uh, forefathers, amen, uh, they, uh, they all went to war. So I want you to listen to this right now as we give honor to uh, veterans uh, to Memorial Day where we uh, remember the fallen. Come on, man. Me. I am the fallen soldier, sailor, airman, and marine. Remember me. I am the one that held the line. Sometimes I volunteered. Sometimes I went because I was told to go. But when the nation called, I answered. In order to serve, I left behind the family, friends, and freedom that so many take for granted. Over time, I used different weapons. A sword, a musket, a bayonet, a rifle, a machine gun. Often, I marched into battle on foot. Other times, I rode to battle on horseback or in wagons, sometimes on trains. Later, in tanks or jeeps or Humvees. In early wars, my ships were made of wood and powered by the wind. Later, they were made of steel and powered by diesel fuel or the atom. I even took to the air and mastered the sky in planes, helicopters, and jets. The machines of war evolved and changed with the times. But remember that it was always me, the warrior, that had to fight our nation's enemies. I fought at Lexington and Concord as our nation was born. I crossed the Delaware on Christmas Day in 1776. In the Civil War, I fought with my brothers and against my brothers at Gettysburg and Shiloh and Bull Run. I learned that we must never again divide. In World War I, I marched on the Marne and held the line at Bella Wood. The war to end all wars, they called it. I just called it hell. In World War II, I fought everywhere. The beaches of Normandy, the Battle of the Bulge, the hell of Guadalcanal. I stood against tyranny and kept darkness from consuming the world. In Korea, I landed in Incheon and broke out of the Chosen Reservoir. They called it the Forgotten War, but I never forgot. In Vietnam, I fought in the Mekong Delta, at Khe Song and Hamburger Hill. Some say my country wavered, but I did not waver, ever. In the recent past, I have fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Baghdad, Fallujah, and Ramadi, in Kunar, Helmand, and Kandahar. As technology advanced, I used night vision goggles and global positioning systems and drones and lasers and thermal optics, but it was still me, a human being, that did the work. 
It was me that patrolled up the mountains or across the desert or through the streets. It was me that suffered in merciless heat and bitter cold. It was me that went out night after night to confront our nation's enemies and confront evil face to face. It was me. Remember me. I was a warrior. But also remember that I was not only a warrior. Remember also that I was a son, a brother, a father. I was a daughter, a sister, a mother. I was a person, like you, a real person with hopes and dreams for the future. I wanted to have children. I wanted to see my son score a touchdown or shoot the winning basket. I wanted to walk my daughter down the aisle. I wanted to kiss my wife again. When I told her I would be with her until the end, I meant it. When I told my children I would always be there for them, I meant it. But I gave all that away. All of it. On that distant battlefield, amongst the fear and the fire and the bullets, or in the sky above enemy territory filled with flak, or on the unforgiving sea, where we fought against the enemy and against the depths of the abyss. There, in those awful places, I held the line. I did not waver and I did not hesitate. I, the soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, I stood my ground and sacrificed my life, my future, my hopes, my dreams. I sacrificed everything for you. This Memorial Day, remember me, the fallen warrior, and remember me not for my sake, but for yours. Remember what I sacrificed so you can truly appreciate the incredible treasures you have. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. You have the joys of life, the joys that I gave up so that you can relish in them. A cool wind in the air, the gentle spring grass on your bare feet, the warm summer sun on your face, family, friends, and freedom. Never forget where it all came from. It came from sacrifice, the supreme sacrifice. Live a life that honors us, the fallen heroes. Remember us and make every day Memorial Day. Amen. Amen. This time, we're going to salute the flag. We're going to take a minute of silence. My buddy Terrence is going to hold the flag, spread her out there. Amen. Old glory. And uh, we're going to remember, take a moment of silence to remember the fallen. Tinch Hut present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Amen. Thank you, Terrence. At ease and sit down. Amen. Amen. Well, we were down at the beach last night and our liberal governor opened the beach up. It wasn't, uh, I mean, it was packed down there. I would say thousands were down there walking. They wasn't worried about the virus, neither was I. Amen. And uh, we got a bunch of gospel tracks out, did a lot of preaching, amen, and uh, 
Thank the Lord that, uh, you know, the beach was... I was leery. I, you know, I didn't know, man, if he was cutting the service down to 10 people in church, but now I understand he realizes the church is essential. Amen! Uh, even though he's a liberal and, uh, amen, needs Jesus Christ. Uh, but uh, anyway, so thank the Lord we were able to do that yesterday, last night, uh, and uh, thank the Lord, amen, uh, that we were able to go. Plan on doing it next week, next Saturday, right here, 530 prayer meeting. And then we head uh, back to the beach or somewhere, amen. I'm going to ask the Lord. We just, we just want to get around everywhere, amen. We want to keep that free speech open, amen, yes. as we go around uh, telling the world they need Jesus, amen. When our kids were sick with 102, 103 temperature, Amen. Call on that lovely name. Amen. What we have done if we took them to the hospital, they stick them in ice to try to get the temperature down. We called on that name and that temperature went yeah. down, man. What a name! Yeah. Above all names. Good morning. It's good to see our visitors here. Praise the Lord. Thanks for coming out. Amen. Appreciate it. We're in Genesis uh, 17. Amen. As we're going through the Bible. J. Vernon McGee goes through the Bible in five years. I don't know. I'm going to probably teach mine to the rapture. Amen. I believe that's around the corner anyway. And uh, we'll just uh, go and see what God does. I'm not in a hurry. Amen. I ain't going to cover six chapters in one sitting. Amen. I just take my time. Amen. And go through this thing and see what God has for us. Amen. All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable, first of all, for doctrine. Amen. To who and when and where are the Scriptures and who are they talking to and all that in the Bible. So doctrine is the most important one. Amen. And that's what we're trying to do as we go through the Scriptures. Amen. Of course, we believe that Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man woman or child, comes unto the Father, but by me. Now he was either the biggest egotistical man that ever walked on the face of the earth, or he was God manifest in the flesh, and every sinner has to say, which one is it? Amen. Was he God? Amen. And if he said, I'm the only way, I don't care what Oprah said and all these wild people. And there's many ways to know there's only one way to God. If you believe the Bible, amen. But then, of course, folks don't believe the Bible. That's why they don't read the Bible, amen. But anyway, uh, so we're in Genesis chapter 17. But what I want to say this morning, chapters 12 through Genesis chapter 50, deals with the rise historically and doctrinally of the nation of Israel. When God calls out Abram, amen, makes him a promise, I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Amen. That's right. <laughs> God showed partiality, amen. Uh, he, tried, he chose a, a man and said, I'm going to start the Jewish nation through this man. He had respect of persons, amen. That's God. I believe God's pessimistic, amen. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe he singled out this man to bless him, Amen. And that made them, which brings up the two divisions that we're going to deal with. Gentiles, amen, I'm a Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And then, of course, this nation, Jewish nation, amen, God singled out through Abram. Amen. In chapter 12, the first Hebrew, Abram, Amen. Shows up with God calling him out. He's the first Hebrew. Amen. And a Hebrew is a Jew. Amen. He says so in chapter number 12, the first Hebrew. Now this is the fourth covenant or agreement with man and his family. 
It started with Adam. Sin caused him to fall. Amen. Uh, and then it went to Noah. Is it Noah? Yeah, let's see. Adam, uh, Noah, amen. And Noah, and then sin made him to fall. Amen. And then now he came out, and now he's with, uh, with Abraham. Amen. The fourth covenant. It's an agreement with man and his family. This is the fourth warning to the Hamites, the Palestinians, and the United Nations about this piece of real estate given to Abram and his seed forever. Palestine don't belong to the Muslims. It belongs to the Jews. Amen. Because why? God gave it to them. And God is more superior than what man thinks. Amen. And so this land grant, the first piece of real estate deal was done by God Almighty to Abram when he said, I'll give you this land for an everlasting possession. Amen. Not only did he say to Abram, but he said, to and his seed forever. Now, if you want to check these things out, chapter 12, 6 through 8, 13, 14 through 18, 15, 18 through 21. In chapter 17, the land grant now goes to Abraham, Abram's seed historically. There are three main uh, characters uh, in the book of Genesis, really four, Joseph is one of them great type of the Lord Jesus Christ but it's how God starts this nation through Abraham Isaac and Jacob and it goes right into Joseph amen see God does what he wants to do <laughs> amen you just accept God as God or you don't amen All right, let's look at chapter 17. Notice some things here. Uh, we're going to go down to verse 14 today. <clears throat> so this is now the fourth warning to the United Nations before they ever came about. They get over there and they go against Israel in those meetings. Amen. They're always trying to bring a Palestinian nation in there which will never happen. Why? Because God said this land belongs to Israel. Amen. Regardless of what they do, God's still in control. Watch it. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, my goodness, you know it was 13 years that God didn't even speak to him. You know what I'm saying? 13 years. Look at back in the chapter, look at the, uh, verse 16. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. He's 86. And now he's what? 99. <laughs> 13 years. What happened? Amen. He went into Hagar. And, he, and Hagar produced a seed that where he would be a wild man. That's what you got in them Muslims, man. Wild men. Amen. That's what the Bible says. He will be a wild man. Amen. His hand will be against every man's hand and every man's hand against him. And God said for 13 years, I ain't even going to say nothing to you, buddy. That's sort of like a, a, like a light admonishment or rebuke, amen. Now he comes back to him after 13 years. He said there in the verse, 99, 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am of the Almighty God, amen. 
That's why I know Jesus Christ is God. When He comes back, He's King of kings and Lord of lords. All caps. Amen. He's the Almighty God. Amen. Almighty. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. Boy, I tell you, that word right there has been misused by the brethren. Amen. It appears 129 times in your Bible, the word perfect. Jesus was the one that said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. Amen. Perfect. So I had to look up the definition. Amen. And it says, Having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as possibly to be, free from a flaw and defect in any condition or quality, faultless. Another meaning for the meaning perfect is complete. So that when God said, and ye are complete in him. That's Jesus Christ. Complete, amen. Perfect in him. Complete in him who's above all principality and powers and everything that's in the earth. Amen. I'm just glad that I've been accepted in the beloved. Amen. By trusting Jesus Christ. So uh, this, this, this word perfect has messed up a lot of brethren to think that this thing is now perfect. I've been in this thing for 72 years now. And I want you to know it ain't perfect. Amen. God said the thought of foolishness is sin. You ever had a foolish thought? Yeah, I get them still at 72 years old. Amen. The transgression of the law is sin. You break God's law. If you, James says, you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, uh, you say, well, what do you mean? Thou shall not steal. That's still operable today. Uh, they may have thrown the Ten Commandments out of the courts and out of the schools and everything else, but it's still around, amen. As a matter of fact, I tell them sinners, thou shall not steal. That gets everybody. Thou shall not bear false witness. What's that mean? Lie. All men are liars, amen. So we see, he said, I'm perfect, walk, be thou perfect and walk before me. Verse 2 says, I will make my covenant agreement between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Uh, birth control, God ain't in it. <laughs> God's the one who opens and closes the womb. Amen. Planned parenthood is of the devil. Amen. The Muslims don't go with on planned parenthood. They get their women and they say, you're here for one thing, that's to procreate. The Catholics used to be good at that too. Amen. But God opens and closes the womb. Amen. Amen. That's why he said, Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. That's a good place to take when you get before God. Amen. Amen. On your face, amen. I mean, uh, in the dirt, <laughs> amen, where you came from and I came from. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's where we're going back to, amen. A good place is to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Get on your face, amen. 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 You, some folks get all arrogant and proud. God resists the proud. 
That's he just, right. he don't have nothing to do with them. Oh, yeah, I'll come to you when I feel like it. But don't worry about it. He ain't looking for you to come to him, amen? God likes to see somebody get humble. Yeah. Somebody get on their face before God. And that's what Abram did. He fell on his face straight down in the dust, amen? And God talked with him saying, Old Testament saints, God came to them in visions. Amen. Came to them in dreams. And now he's coming to them talking. Amen. Just like Adam and Eve. Uh, they heard the voice of the Lord in the garden. Amen. And that's how God deals with these Old Testament saints. Through visions and dreams and audible things. And then soon, as soon as you get to Joshua... He's going, to ju he's going to use you and talk to you through a book. Right. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. We have the book today. What a wonderful thing it is to have the book. Amen. And Abram fell on his face. And talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, my agreement. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Amen. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. Amen. You know, the Muslims and the Jews and the Americans uh, named their children Abraham because, number one, he's a friend of God. He's God's friend. Amen. Are you God's friend? Amen. I want to be God's friend. Amen. Because of Abraham. Amen. High Father. Amen. Abraham. He said, I don't want your name anymore, Abram, but I want it to be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Verse 6, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. There it is. Amen. God, listen, when God took them folks down into Egypt in the book of Exodus, amen, they came out of there 400 years later they had an army of 600,000 strong plus the strangers that went with them. I mean, and God provided their needs, man. I mean, they got out there in the wilderness and God sent down manna to feed them, amen. What did that old nature do? Griped. Oh, what do we got to eat, man? It's old manna, man. I'm getting tired of eating, even though it's, it's as sweet as honeycomb. I, I, I want some leeks. I want some melons. I want some stuff back in Egypt. That's how Egypt is, the type of the world. Wants to draw you back, draw you back. Verse 7, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations, for watch it, for an everlasting covenant, an everlasting agreement. I mean, it's like God giving us everlasting life. It lasts forever, amen? It has that tense in it, amen, that I-N-G tense where it just keeps right on going. Everlasting covenant. Watch it to be a God unto thee. He said, if you come out from among them, yeah, I'll be a God unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters. He said that to the church. Amen. Amen. I like that song. And he talks with me, and he walks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share 
as we tarry there, none other has ever known. What a sweet fellowship. An everlasting agreement, covenant, that God makes with this Abraham, the father and the root of the Jews, one of them. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Oh, well, you know, boy, Lord, the Lord has chastened them. He sure has. Amen. And we're going to get this old Bible here and we're going to see that even that godly seed, that seed that God chose out and they get over there and there's a famine in the land of Samaria. Samaria, It records of two mamas coming to the king and saying, yesterday we ate my son, today we're supposed to eat her son and she has hid her son. Cannibalism, man. Famine in the land. Verse 8, And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land, a real estate deal, the land wherein thou art a stranger. (laughs) You see, that land they came into, the Hamites were there, and they were a stranger in that land. When they went down into Egypt, they were a stranger in that land. Canaan was their land. That's where they were supposed to be at. Thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan. Amen. To Canaan land I'm on my way Where the soul of man never dies I remember them old camp meeting songs Back in back in the 80's Amen Going down there to uh, uh, the Jubilee Amen Two times a year Amen I'd say goodbye to my wife And I'd take off down there Because I'm telling you In the battle The, uh, the battle gets weary I needed a break. And I'd get down there, man. They start singing to Canaan's land. I'm on my way where the soul of man never dies. And you see, old Granny, man, seventy. I was in my forties back then. Amen. You see, old Granny, that old white hair going around. Woo, 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 woo. That old stuff made me shout, man. We'd get out and get to singing them old camp meeting songs, Canaan land, amen. And God knows, man, the Spirit of God would fall, amen. There wouldn't be a dry eye in the service, but praise God. The land of Canaan belongs to an everlasting possession to Israel, amen. Of course, we compared it spiritually to our Canaan land. Amen. But watch what he said. He said, for an everlasting possession. Amen. Amen. They need to move out over there, and one day God's going to move them out at the second advent. Amen. He's going to destroy them. That's coming against Israel. Because that's an everlasting possession. Amen. An everlasting prison. It was promised in Genesis 12, 1 and verse 7, Genesis 13 and verse 15, Genesis 15 and verse 18. Amen. And I'll be their God. God ain't changed. Amen. Look at Genesis 18 and uh, verse 19 where he says in verse 18, 19, For I know him, talking about Abraham, that he will command his children. That's right. Moms and dads command their children. uh, uh, This is is a freedom. You want want to choose Buddha? Go ahead, choose Buddha. 
Uh, you you want to choose Confucius? Go go ahead. Uh, I mean, we realize we realize in your mind. No, moms and dads are to train their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. Train them. Amen. Buddha wrong. Amen. Besides, he's in hell, Buddha, <laughs> along with Confucius. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, they, I mean, I still get their little cookies and read from their little sayings, amen. I had a nice one I meant to write down the other day that Confucius said, but uh, I didn't get it fast enough, amen. But it don't matter, Amen. He says back there in verse number 8, for an everlasting possession, everlasting. He already said it one time in verse 7, for an everlasting covenant, agreement, now it's an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Amen. That makes people upset, man. Is God loves Israel? Sure he does. That's what he said right there, all the way back there. And it is, uh, it is 1898 B.C. when he makes this thing there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now we want to go to the sign of the Abrahamic covenant to make them a different people, to make them a peculiar people. God does something that's not normal. It's called circumcision, outward in the flesh. Amen. And so that is going to what makes that Hebrew of Genesis 12, now he's a Hebrew for sure because he gets the covenant or the agreement of circumcision in every male child in the flesh. Amen. Look at verse number 9. The sign of the Abrahamic covenant. Why? The Jews require a sign. We got a bunch of Gentiles wanting to run around today trying to be Jews. It ain't going to work. Signs are given to the Jews. The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks, that's right. That's why we got all these idiots in the, in the universities. It's a shame mom and dad has trained up a child for 12 years, maybe uh, as a, in their home as a Christian, because in the 70s, uh, the public schools had gotten so bad with prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer and, and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and all these things that made America great. And so they decided to do a Christian school movement. That was back in the 70s. Amen. We were part of that in the 80s, Ms. Gibson. We decided to pull our kids out of this public school and give them a Christian education where God was exalted, and that's exactly what they did, amen. That's why, it's, uh, that's why it's hell in those classrooms now, amen. Amen. Ask my wife. She works over uh, Bayview Elementary over there, uh, amen, that gives her time because she ain't been there since the COVID, <laughs> the corona. I like coronavirus. They named it after a beer. <laughs> corona. Spelt the same way? Aim coronavirus. No, we would call it COVID-19. No, I call it coronavirus. That's what it came out in, man. Amen. So you're a nut. I know it. But I'm screwed on to Jesus. Amen. He's the boat. I'm the nut. Amen. God said to Abraham, notice his name is changed, Thou shalt keep my covenant, but therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Amen. Amen. This is my covenant, 
which he shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child. Amen. Among you shall be circumcised. Now that's what makes the Jews different. For years. Amen. I mean, uncircumcision is part of life. When you come in as a male, you're uncircumcised. Amen. But God said, I want you Jews to be special. I want you to take those children and I want you to take yourself and circumcise yourself. That way to make you different. Amen. Amen. What a way, huh? That's God for you. His way or the highway. Amen. His way. I'm going to go home believing this Bible. Come the end of June, I've already gone through it twice. Amen. End of June. I think I'm approaching a hundred times going through the Bible. I got books on my shelves that I ain't ever even read. Amen. Doctrinal books and historical books. Amen. But thank God I want to know the book of books. Amen. Amen. All those books are opinions on what this book says. I want to know what this book says. Amen. 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 This is the covenant agreement which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child. Now there's a, there's a double application here. You remember Jesus Christ is the man child in the book of Revelation, amen. He's the man child, amen. So this has a double application here. Among you shall be circumcised, amen. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So at this time, you got the nation of Israel uh, on the rise, amen. The Jew, Gentile Jew. There's only three divisions, my friend. Now that the church has started for 2,000 years, you got the Jew the Gentile, and the church of God. That's the only three divisions, amen. You can hyphenate your name if you all you want to, but you're either a Jew, a Gentile, or you're part of the church of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm in the church of God. I am the church of God. This building is not the church of God. You're the church of God if you're born again. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. I was 30 years old when I got saved. The first 30 years of my life I gave to the devil. I came out of the womb a liar, even though I was innocent. I was a liar. Amen. Uh, I would cry. Amen. I mean, I wanted attention. I, all those things that the old nature wants, you know. And then I got off into my teenage years and amen and sowed wild things that I regret this day. Amen. 30 years. And then I got saved at 30. Amen. amen. So I said I gave my first 30 years to the devil. I've given my, uh, I'm going to give the next 30 years to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now I'm 42 years old in the Lord, so I've been given... The first 30 to the devil, 30 to Jesus, and now it's by grace I am what I am. 12 years to Jesus. Amen. I hope to finish my race for Jesus. Amen. I, I, I'm like that old fella with the plow. Amen. 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 I, you know, the Bible likens uh, things unto a plowing, amen. Uh, I mean, I've never had to get behind an ass, a donkey, or whatever, or a cow and try to make a straight row, amen, down through there. But the Bible said, whosoever has puts his hands to the plow, uh, looking back, is not fit for the kingdom of God. 
You got to keep your eyes straight on Jesus, man. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Watch when it's to be done. Verse 12. And he that is eight days old. Amen. There's a clotting in the mail in eight days. But the hospitals don't obey God anymore. The minute that child is born, they either circumcise that child if you want it circumcised or they don't, amen. But if they do, it's usually right when it comes out of the womb or three days out. Of the, they don't keep them mamas in there anymore. So they have them babies, they're ready to whoop, send them out, amen, as long as the child's healthy, the mother's healthy, amen. But God said there's a day to do that, Amen. I think we did Jerob that way, didn't we? Eight days. Huh? Jerob and Nathan. And sure enough, the blood clotted just like God said it would. Eight days after their birth. Believe the Bible. Amen. Amen. Said, man, you're a biblious idolater. Yeah, man. Yeah. Amen. I hope when I stand before kings, amen, judges, or whatever, I hope I can just utter the words out of my mouth without the Bible in my hand. Amen. Amen. Eight days old shall be uh, circumcised among you. Every man circumcised in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger uh, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money. Uh, yeah, they had slaves back then, man. Amen. Bought them, amen. Uh, 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 and he born in thy house and he that is bought with uh, thy money must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for what? An everlasting covenant, an agreement. And the uncircumcised my child, man child, uh, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, watch it, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Amen. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Amen. And this, this thing here has to do with death because they're not obeying what God said. Amen. So here in Genesis 15, Abraham becomes a type of the New Testament Christian. He gets imputed righteousness in Genesis 15 where it said he believed God and it counted to him for righteousness. Imputed righteousness. This is where Abraham becomes a type of the New Testament Christian who also receives imputed righteousness the moment he believes on Jesus Christ. In other words, he gives me the righteousness of Jesus Christ and I used to think, well, in return, I give him my filthy sins. That ain't worth it, man. He gives me the imputed righteousness, and he took my sins and nailed them to the cross. See, if you're not saved, your sins are forgiven right now. All you got to do is receive it. Amen. Amen. Because he took those sins and nailed them to the cross. Amen. I tell them sinners down there, if you don't get saved, you'll have to meet your sins in hell when you die. Here he gets circumcised physically while the Christian is spiritually. Now we want to run through three passages and I'll be done okay the first one is Romans chapter 2 Romans chapter number 2 
all sinners with Scripture will be judged by God's commandments. You know, that's why America's in big trouble with God. Why is that, Brother Gibson? Because they've had the Scriptures in here for 400 years. That old King James Bible's been in this country for 400 years. I tell him sinners out there, surely you read one verse. Surely you read one chapter. Surely you read one book of the Bible. Oh, you can go right to the, we used to say the dime store. Dime store, I think, is gone now. And you could buy a King James Bible for a dollar. Now you go across the street. Are they still got them over there? No. Isn't that something? Family dollar took the Bible out. Amen. Amen. Why? God's word is free. Amen. Why can't you get them free at the bookstore? Because that's a money racket there. Amen. Amen. You have to pay for it. Romans chapter 2, beginning in verse 17, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law. So he's dealing with the Jew. And makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide to the, of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth of the law. Thou therefore which teaches another, teachest not thyself. Thou that preaches a man should not steal, do thou a steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, doest thou commit adultery? Thou that abhors idols, doest thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed. Blasphemed, blasphemed, yeah. <laughs> they were talking last night on the van coming back, James and Brother Thing. Said, do you know of any sin that can't be forgiven? Kevin said, yeah, the blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. I disagree. Amen. I didn't say anything. I just like to listen sometimes, learn some things. Amen. So he believes you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. If he's anointed and you blaspheme him, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost and you're going to hell. Is that right? Amen. I hope I'm full of the Holy Ghost. A lot of times I'm full of me. Just like you are. <laughs> Amen. But I thought it was in, I just interested in going home, you know. I was out there for five and a half hours last night, Jimmy. You know how you are when you get through cutting hair? My left hip was killing me so bad, buddy. I had to give the banner to Kevin and do this. Ah, ah. Ah, 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 amen. You should have seen them old people look at me at those cars. I don't care, man. My hip was killing me, man. Amen. Then I'd grab that banner and hold it again, praying for them sinners. Something would get to them. I don't want nobody to go to hell. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise God. Give God the glory. Don't give me any. <laughs> now God gets the glory. Anybody gets saved at that? God gets the glory. Amen. Without Him, we can do nothing. Amen. So anyway, <laughs> somehow I jumped off that thing, amen. But let me get out here to this, uh, this New Testament uh, thing here. Uh, this New Testament definition of a spiritual Jew, not a physical Jew. 
okay, a spiritual Jew because he's dealing with circumcision. Watch in verse number uh, 25. For the circumcision barely profited if thou keep the law, but if thou be a break of the law, thy circumcision uh, is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if uncircumcision keepeth the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter, uh, the, by, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. See where he's going to? Talking about uncircumcision and circumcision. Talking about the Jew and the Gentile. Then he says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Amen. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew spiritually, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is of that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. Amen. All right. So then we see here that it's spiritual circumcision. One was outward circumcision, the Jew, but the New Testament Christian is spiritually circumcised. Amen even though he may be circumcised or not uncircumcised, whatever. Amen. Colossians chapter number 2. Oh, man, we're still on good time. Praise God. Gen uh, Colossians chapter 2. This is spiritual circumcision and spiritual baptism. Amen. You see, there's only one Faith, one baptism, one Lord, one, one faith, one baptism, and one Lord. Yeah, I was thinking Colossians says so, amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In other words, there's only one Lord. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That's a mystery. Never you have mystery. You'll, you'll never figure it out. I've never figured it out. I believe it. Amen. And so there's one uh, baptism. That's the baptism that puts you into Jesus Christ, not in the water. You wouldn't believe how many people are trusting water. Uh, people telling me last night, a little girl talking out. I said, are you saved? She said, yeah. I said, how'd you get saved? I got baptized. That'll never do it. You got to have the one baptism that puts you into Jesus Christ, amen, through the Spirit of God. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews, Gentiles, uh, we've been made to drink into one Spirit. Right. Right. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, are you there with me? Verse 11. Colossians 2.11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sin, body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. It's a spiritual circumcision. It's also spiritual baptism, buried with him in baptism, wherein we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Amen. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Aren't you glad all your sins are gone? Hallelujah. Amen. You don't hold on to some of them. All of them are gone. Past, a present, and future, they're gone. Amen. 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 Listen, my sins are gone. You ask me why I'm happy. I'll just tell you why. Because 
Terrence loves me doing that. My sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness. That's good enough for me. My sins are gone. You like that, don't you, Terrence? Amen. You're going to have to sing it with me one time. Amen. Amen. Watch it now. Blotting out the hand, uh, handwriting of ordinances which was contrary to us, which uh, against us, was, uh, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, man. Where's my sins? They've been nailed to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers. Yes, sir. He made a shoe of them openly. Uh, uh, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them. Spiritual circumcision took place in your life when you trusted Jesus Christ. One more scripture, Hebrews chapter 4. And this is how it was done. Amen. Amen. You know why? Somebody says, I don't believe the Bible. You'll never be saved. No. You, you'll never be saved. Ah, that book's written by men. Yeah, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Ah, oh, it's just a man's book. Amen. A bunch of these and thous and all that. Amen. It's God's book. You don't believe that Bible right there, you can't be saved. Amen. That's right. I listen as a child, I was taught that the Bible was God's Word. Some folks don't get that, amen? But nevertheless, you just got to believe the Bible is God's Word. Right. Amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 4, and this is how it was done, spiritual circumcision. Amen, spiritual baptism. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Well, what am I doing in chapter 5? 412. Yeah, 412. I'm sorry. 412. I'm in chapter 5, but there it is. Watch it. The divine, living, critical nature of the written scriptures. For the word of God. Now, that's the written word of God. It's got a little W. A lot of the new Bibles put the written word of capital W and the incarnate word of capital W. King James don't do that. King James shows you there's a difference between the written word of God and the incarnate word of God. Amen. Like in the beginning was God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, was God. For the word of God is quick. What does that mean? Alive. You know why people don't read the Bible? Because it gets them. Amen. While they're reading it, it's reading them. Amen. Quick and powerful. Oh, well, you mean it's powerful? Yeah, man, quote it. Amen. Amen. You get full of God. Amen. You get out there and get to witness and for for God, uh, people are gonna get mad at you. Yeah. Yeah. They might even try to gnash on you with their teeth. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Full of God and full of the Bible makes a dangerous Christian man. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. What does Paul say? Uh, holding forth the word of life. Amen. Uh, he said, uh, gird up your loins with truth and put on the breastplate of righteousness and, and, and shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace and take the helmet of salvation and uh, the word sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Take it. we got to have it all on. Amen. Two-edged sword, watch what it does, piercing, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Man, I mean, I ain't down there at a fellowship on the beach, man. 
I don't want to talk, you know, you come on, how you doing? You doing all right? I'm looking at people as they pass by. I'm observing what happened. That's what I see. I see the word of God working on people. I see some of them go by passive. Amen. Amen. I go, oh, God, get on them. Get them. I ain't down there for a social gathering. I'm down there to see people get under conviction. Amen. Amen. They get under conviction, they might get saved. Amen. And the word of God does that. Watch it now. We're almost done. Somebody say amen. Amen. Sharper than a two-edged sword. When he comes back, he's coming back with the sword of the spirit. Amen. In a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Piercing even and dividing asunder. Watch it now. Soul. Man's a three-part being. Man has a soul, man has a spirit, man has a body. So that word of God is piercing the soul and the spirit. And of the joints and marrow, that's the body. Watch it. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That thing discerns, man. It discerns. The word discerner, amen, means critic. The scholars Subject the Bible to higher criticism or lower criticism. But reality is the book is the critical of all scholarship. It criticizes the scholar while he is reading it. We call it the Holy AV AV 1611 versus scholarship hold onlyism. Amen. That's what the word does. Discern of the thoughts. Amen. The thought of foolishness is sin. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to tell you. These guys going around and said, I ain't sinned in 15 years. <laughs> what? Yeah, I ain't. Uh, I'm holy. I, I, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. How do they say it? Uh, 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 I'm sanctified. Uh, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, amen. I ain't sinned in 15 years. You liar. I remember Wallace B. Green was in a meeting. One of them guys said that to him, you know. So he started walking around the guy like this. Going around him like that. Going around him. And the guy kept backing up and following him as he walked around. He said, what are you doing, man? He said, I'm looking for the wings on your back to see if you're an angel. (laughs) Angels don't have wings, but that's all right. (laughs) Amen. Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither, watch this verse, is there any creature, and that's what we are, creatures, that is not manifest in his sight. What? But all things are naked. I'm standing up here with my white shirt on, my tie and my pants, but before God, I'm naked. Amen. Amen. You know, one of these days, God's going to do the greatest striptease act, amen, when he steps out of the, because the heavens declare the glory of God. If you want to know where he's at, he's in his, in his creation, Amen. One day he's going to step out of that man. What a sight that. We get to see that, Terrence. We're saved by the grace of God. We get to see that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We'll take a glorified body to do it, but we'll see it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes. This book has eyes. Amen. It sees. And we sing that little song to kids. We used to drive a bus bringing kids to Sunday school. I miss them days, man. That's when I was in my 30s, man, young, you know, working a full-time job, all that stuff like that. Amen. I still work a full-time job. (laughs) Amen. I ain't afraid to work. Some people think that's a nasty word. Amen. 
we knew what was going to say. We'd go around there, and we'd get on that with them kids, you know, and I'd be driving the bus, and my buddy behind me, he'd be keeping them under control on that bus, and we'd sing, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ho, ho, ho. For the Savior up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, some of the things, man. Be honest with you, Jimmy. My greatest thrills is thinking back, you know, 42 years of the ministry. Amen. And the joys that I went through as a bus driver, knocking on doors, working at a serviceman center. Amen. Getting married to Miss Kay. Amen. What a thing, man. Amen. And then the devil says, how about this one? Get out of here, devil. Amen. Watch it. And open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That's right. So we see another type of Abraham being circumcised outwardly to the Christian inwardly. Let's pray. Father. Thank you for folks uh, coming out today, God. We're small, but Lord, little as much of God is in it. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to preach last night on the streets of Virginia Beach, Lord. Amen. Everybody's somebody's fool. I'm a fool for Jesus. Thank you for that, Lord. And I pray now, uh, Lord, as we dismiss, uh, God, you'd bring us back this evening, 7 o'clock, to hear more on Thus Saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen.